As every sheep farmer knows, a profitable flock is a healthy flock. This applies whether you're farming in the uplands or in the lowlands, commercially or, as we are here at the Morden, researching the diseases of sheep. Achieving this is not easy. We all need a preventive medicine program tailor-made to suit the requirements of our own flock. There are now effective medicines to prevent and treat many of the diseases which plague our flocks. However, probably our greatest weapon in the fight against disease is our knowledge of the enemy, where and when the disease is likely to strike and how to prevent and control it. In this new series of technical programs, we're going to tell you something about the skin parasites of sheep. We're going to show you how to identify them and we're going to illustrate some of the damage that they can cause. We'll show you how to prevent or control these infestations, but if they do occur, we'll show you how to treat them effectively. Most of us who work with sheep are well aware of the damage that these parasites can cause. However, I suspect that fewer of us are aware of the costs involved. If we look at sheep scab first, then this is not a new disease and the economic cost to the sheep farmer has been well known for generations. We can go back as far as 1280 and look at the decimation it caused to, to the Cistercian monks at Fountains Abbey when they ran 15,000 animals at the time for their fleeces of course in those days and an outbreak of sheep scab put them into debt to the tune of over £6,000 which in those days was a tre tremendous amount of money. Coming back to modern times, of course, since we've lost the compulsory dipping, the incidence of sheep scab has increased, and we're now running at an estimated 4,000 flocks affected every year. That means, if we look at average flock sizes, nearly 900,000 ewes in affected flocks every year. And just a conservative estimate of the loss in gross margin due to condition, loss of productivity and wool, value, then we can be looking at 10% loss or £4 million per annum. Of course, sheep scab isn't the only problem that we face in terms of ectoparasites, one that will be very familiar to many hill farmers as the problem of ticks. Now, it's reported that we lose 300,000 hill lambs every year to ticks, tick pyemia and associated diseases. Now, that's costing the industry, just taking a conservative estimate of £30 a lamb, £9 million every year. If we move on to blowfly, a problem very familiar with all sheep farmers, then again we estimate that over one million animals a year are affected by blowflies. And it's not difficult to envisage a 10% loss in performance for an animal that's affected. So we could be looking at as much as four million pounds per annum just in lost performance. Of course, there are other ectoparasites such as lice and keds which we shouldn't ignore. And on top of the costs that I've talked about in terms of the animal performance, there are also all the treatment costs and all the labour that goes with the dealing of a, with an outbreak. If we add all of this up then, the cost of exoparasites to the industry is very high and we must take it seriously and we must start to protect our flocks from the possibility of there being an ectoparasite outbreak. It's too late when you have the problem let's protect us ourselves and save the loss in the first place. These parasites not only eat into our profits, but they also have an impact on the leather industry. Ectoparasites cause a big problem in the leather industry. The parasites irritate and cause damage to the um, surface of the skin of the animal, and this damage then becomes apparent as scarring and scratching on the leather once it's been made. The uh, amount of damage that's being found is um, has been increasing over the last few years, particularly since the uh, deregularization of the sheep dipping practices. Um, and since they've changed, we've noticed uh, a five to six fold increase in this type of, of damage associated with um, such ectoparasites as lice, uh, sheep, sheep scab mite, or even um, keds. The problem is now becoming so widespread that we've estimated that between 15 and 20 million pounds is being lost from the sheepskin chain. That's from the farmer through to the tanner. Um, and we're now having to look at the uh, at ways of exploring direct quality payments for the skins. There can be no doubting the seriousness of the problem. So, let's look at the most important skin parasites of sheep and how to deal with them effectively. 
As our aim in most cases is the prevention of infestation, and as the use of dips, pour-ons and spot-on products is part of our preventative strategy in nearly every case, we'll run through the main points about safe and effective use of these treatments first. The proper use of dips and pour-ons is essential to provide protection for your flock, and as with all farm chemicals, to prevent damage to the health of those undertaking the treatment. Quite simply, if the process fails to result in an adequate level of active ingredient on your sheep, it will not do the job. You'll have wasted both time and money, and your flock will still be at risk. So make sure you and your staff have appropriate training, and that you've considered health and safety implications. Dip only in dry weather. Avoid dipping less than three weeks after shearing. Don't dip when sheep are hot, tired or thirsty. Take care to read and follow the manufacturer's instructions. Ensure that all dipping personnel are wearing the correct equipment. A face shield should be worn when handling the dip concentrate. A PVC or nitrile waterproof coat or bib apron should be worn over waterproof leggings. Non-lined heavy-duty PVC or nitrile style gloves at least 300 millimeters in length and half a millimeter in thickness. And Wellington boots. Measure the quantities of concentrate and wetter carefully. If the dip is a single day dip, don't be tempted to use it the next day. And if saving a dip overnight, use a bacteriostat if possible to avoid the buildup of the harmful bacteria which cause post-dipping lameness. Make sure you read the product literature so that you know what dip you're using. Be patient. Make sure the sheep are in the bath for a long enough period of time to soak the whole fleece. At least a minute for scab control. For the control of blow-flying keds, 30 seconds is considered sufficient. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for replenishment, as the concentration may have been reduced or stripped as each sheep passes through. Remember, different chemicals have different stripping rates. Observe all correct safety procedures for the protection of you and your staff, your flock, the consumer and the environment. Make sure that you dispose of the contents of the dip tank in the correct way by pumping it out into a slurry tanker and spreading it onto a suitable piece of land, fairly flat and well away from water courses, at no more than 5,000 litres per hectare. If in any doubt, consult the Environment Agency. Never allow the contents of a dip bath to enter a soak away. Flumethrin dip may be neutralised by adding agricultural lime at a rate of 50 kilograms per 1,000 litres. Mix it thoroughly. Agitate at two to three day intervals for at least 14 days. Then pump out and spread as usual. Dips containing the OP propotampos can be neutralised overnight by the addition of hypochlorite disinfectant. Diazinon can be neutralised by adding slate lime but refer to the data sheet for a specific recommendation. Just like a dip, a pour-on or spot-on product will work only if applied correctly. And remember, these products will not cover scab. Pour-ons are available as either cypermethrin or cyromazine based Cyromazine is an insect growth regulator and stops blowfly larvae developing from stage one to stage two. It's very important that it's applied before the anticipated challenge. Once it's applied, it spreads down through the fleece. Vetrazin now has a pink marker in it to save having to mark each animal as it's applied. When using porons, remember to read and adhere to the manufacturer's instructions on the product literature. Apply the product according to body weight. Weigh the heaviest animals in the group and treat all animals according to this dose volume. It's always worth checking calibration on the applicator first by running cold water through it. 
Make sure you check the withdrawal period for meat or even milk as appropriate. Correct use of insecticides is essential, regardless of the type of infestation you're trying to prevent. Other application methods include sheep showers and jetting guns, which don't offer sufficient cover for scab control, but are a quick method of offering protection against blowfly, for example. Sheep scab, or seroptic mange, is a contagious disease caused by the sheep scab mite, Seroptes communis ovis. The sheep scab mite was virtually eradicated from Britain in 1952, after almost 50 years of compulsory dipping, but was reintroduced by the importation of infested sheep in 1973. Compulsory dipping was reintroduced from 1977, but dropped again when scab was all but eradicated in 1993. Veterinary surgeon Robert Anderson practices at Duns in the Scottish borders. There's no doubt, there, there, it's no doubt it's, 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 an, it's been an explosion in the last couple of years. The, our practice in the borders covers a, a substantial area, of one of the major sheep producing areas of Scotland, and the disease was unknown until two years ago. And now we have outbreaks on a regular basis, ranging from flying sheep flocks to even the best managed of pedigree flocks. So, uh, in that respect, it, it has become a major problem and in fact is the major parasitic skin disease of sheep that we come across. So why is it that an industry under so much threat from sheep scab should allow it to take hold once again? I think ignorance as to the extent of, the, uh, of how quickly it will come back again and also complacency in that it, it's been, it, we've eradicated it uh, almost to the point of extinction. Uh, but there's certainly complacency as to how quickly it will can appear on the farm and then how quickly it will spread amongst infected sheep. Uh, the, 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 the mite is able to breed at an alarming rate and uh, although it requires close contact for spread of the disease, it can rapidly get up to a serious infestation on, 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 on any flock. You'll find most farmers dip their sheep, but there seems to be always someone who deals in sheep and he'll go and buy sheep from the market or sheep from other sources and bring them back. They then get out and get into the other sheep and away you go. The other problem we have is that a lot of hill sheep are, are wintered away from home. If you get uh, lambs away wintered, they get mixed up with other lambs and that is another area where we find uh, scab occurring quite often. The first animals to be affected are often those in poor body condition. They suffer intense irritation and can be seen rubbing themselves against fence posts, gates, walls or pen divisions. Scab mites are left behind on tags of wool to infest other animals. These sheep also rub against others in the flock, the main method by which the mite is spread. Sheep will scratch themselves with their feet or nibble at their fleece often leaving telltale strands of wool between their teeth. One of the first signs is for the wool to take on a dirty, rubbed appearance. The activity of the mites feeding off the skin causes straw-coloured blood serum to ooze out. This then dries to form crusty scabs. If you part the fleece over an affected area, it often looks as though brown sugar has been sprinkled amongst the wool. Mites are active at the edge of these scabs. The adults, around half a millimetre long, can sometimes be seen by the naked eye. The whole process takes three to four months, during which time the sheep become emaciated through not eating. As the condition progresses, the animal becomes more and more nervous. It's alarmed by noise. If handled, it may fall over or have a fit. In an untreated outbreak, there'll be some deaths caused by starvation and others through infections such as pneumonia because of the animal's debilitation. It's helpful to be able to tell the difference between the telltale signs of scab and lice, something which surprisingly few sheep farmers can do. The irritation that you see isn't so much with lice. With lice you see normal fleece with normal skin underneath it. With scab you'll see scabs on the skin surface and bare patches, almost certainly. With lice, you won't see scabs on the skin surface. 
Uh, it'll be a perfectly healthy skin surface that you'll see with, with lice, but you will see the lice in the wall. This farmer noticed a problem in animals wintered inside in February 1997. Well, maybe about three weeks, a month ago, I noticed one or two of them that were bare, but um, never really are starting to, to get bare patches on them. But uh, having never seen sheep scab before, I didn't really know what to, what to look for. Um, so really just for peace of mind, I called the vet in the other day and uh, they took a sample away and came back and confirmed that it was sheep scab. You always have suspicions, but you always hope that it's not that, you know? Um, but uh, as I say, you know, having never seen it before, I didn't know, you know, whether it was or whether it wasn't, yeah. Robert Anderson came across a salutary case only a few miles away. Or the most recent outbreak would be in a small number of greyface ewes which were purchased by a new client coming onto a new farm in the area. These sheep were purchased down in, I think, central England, moved onto a holding farm in Wales, 